biggest storyline that you want to take a big bite out of going into Super Bowl week? The Chiefs are knocking on the door on history. We talked about it last yeah. week. I think we, we've already dissected this game for a week. So for our show, mm -hmm. we're going to have to like recharge and do it again. Yep. Yep. And I don't think we hit this enough last week. Three in four years is like mm -hmm. very rare air. In fact, let me see the list of teams that have won three Super Bowls in a matter of four years. Steelers did it twice, okay? Or five years, I'm sorry. Steelers did it twice. Mm -hmm. Cowboys did it with Jimmy and then Barry Switzer. The Patriots have done it twice. We're talking just three different franchises. Chiefs are on the doorstep. Mm. If they win a third in five years, that is talking dynasty stuff. It's also talking greatest team of all time stuff when you start rattling off what they've done and who they've beaten along the way. I think this Chiefs team, we haven't seen a back-to-back -back Super Bowl winner since the 03-04 Patriots. That's 20 years ago. They're going to be banging the door on that. That thing right there, three and five years. And then it starts to be written with, with Mahomes' legacy and Kelsey's legacy. Are they the greatest of all time? Mm -hmm. they, and then you have Andy Reid, who now, okay, for years it was Andy Reid can't win the big one. And Andy Reid is just you know another coach in Bill Belichick's era. Well, Andy Reid's not that far away from Bill Belichick yeah. in all-time wins. Bill Belichick could not get hired this offseason. And Andy Reid is still riding high with the greatest team in the NFL and might win another ring. Mm. Does it happen that quickly where Andy Reid rack, racks up all those regular season wins, yeah. gets a couple more rings, and all of a sudden Andy Reid's the greatest coach of all time, and we're not talking about Belichick as that guy. Crazy. This is what it could be. you got to win this one, though. You, every year matters right now. Belichick's the GOAT. Lombardi, Shula, the bland, all those guys are right there. Andy Reid is somewhere in that conversation. You win a third in five years and you keep on racking up these regular season wins, you better believe you're in the conversation also. I love that. And what you're talking about is greatness from Mahomes to Reid to Kelsey, every single one of those guys, you watched them perform at the biggest stage over the last several years and you're so impressed. I'm going on the flip side when you talk about storyline because usually the players that are at this level when they're leading their team and they're performing really well, there's no question of how good they are. And I'm talking Brock Purdy. And to your point, Peter, we're hitting the same storylines, but I can't get over the fact that it seems like every single day there's a new headline that is surrounding Brock Purdy and is questioning his ability. This is a guy who was a pro bowler this year. He threw for the most passing yards in 49ers franchise history, which is insane. The most yards per attempt in the NFL history. Brock Purdy has done those things. Yes, we know. Drafted the last pick in the draft. We know undrafted players, Jake DeLone, Kurt Warner, the only players that came out lower than Brock Purdy to start and play the quarterback position in the Super Bowl. But just this past week, you said Cam Newton came out. He's a, the 10th best player on his team. Warren Sapp had a response to that. There's so much that surrounds Brock Purdy. It's just unbelievable to me how well he has played this year. And we can't just accept that he has been elite on the football field as the quarterback and leader of the San Francisco 49ers. He has gotten them to a Super Bowl. So I look at this storyline as being so important because his play in the game, it won't just be looked at as whether they won or lost the game. His entire play will be dissected. Did he throw enough touchdown passes? What did Brock Purdy do to lead this team, whether they win or lose the game? Hey, let's do the, the DJ confetti test, but instead with a prospect with a Super Bowl. Explain the DJ confetti so test. So Daniel yeah. Jeremiah's confetti test is when a prospect comes out of college, be it a quarterback, if you have looked at all the measurables and everything and you just need some other little piece of magic, can you close your eyes and really imagine yeah. this quarterback winning a Super Bowl, standing in the confetti and holding up the Lombardi? It's just like a fun little yeah. draft talk. Can you close your eyes and imagine Mahomes walking off the field in defeat in the confetti and the Chiefs losing and there's a shot of Taylor and she's sad or dejected or whatever and then Brock Purdy is holding up the Lombardi? I think you can, but my, my big storyline is just like, are the, are the Chiefs actually going to lose this? You know, like mm. he, Mahomes is 14-3 and three in the playoffs and the only playoff losses he has are to Brady in the Super Bowl and twice in overtime of the title game. In my experience doing this and predicting and broadcasting Super Bowls is the most interesting, difficult to predict Super Bowls where you really don't know what's going to happen are when one team has the better quarterback and one team has the better defense. That is really like good luck. So, for example, take Peyton Manning as an example. Uh, he goes against the Bears years ago. They had a much better defense. He was the better quarterback. He wins. He goes against the Seahawks. The Seahawks have a much better defense. Peyton's a better quarterback. Peyton gets blown away. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really difficult to predict. The problem is, I think, with this Super Bowl is that I think the Chiefs have the better quarterback and the better mm. defense. I do. And I know that sounds blasphemous for the 49ers because you see Bosa and Warner and all those guys that we like. The Chiefs defense has played better than them 
all year. This, this Niners defense has been very good. They have not been as good as the Chiefs in a bunch of different metrics. And also, the Niners defense is not as good as the one that showed up years ago against this Chiefs team in the Super Bowl when Salah was on the sidelines. So making the case for the Niners to win the game, I don't think they have the better quarterback, and I don't think they have the better defense. So where does that leave you? Mahomes has to make a f- bunch of mistakes for them to win, and Purdy has to be great. Mm. In this Mahomes era, it's tough to see that, even if Purdy is great. Yeah. Can you picture Patrick Mahomes playing a, a, a C, C-plus game in the Super Bowl? I don't know. First half he did against the Niners, but again, different year. I just think my system in tough-to-predict Super Bowls, quarterback and best defense on the same team, it's tough to find a way that they lose. It's such a specific differentiation that you're making because it's not better offense because many could probably argue that from top to bottom talent-wise on the roster, 49ers have more skilled offensive players, but you're just going quarterback, better quarterback period. And you think... 14-3 in the playoffs. It's just very difficult to beat him in a playoff game. Very difficult. I'm curious how coaches line up in in matchups like that and and matchup consideration. Peter, on the flip side of that Andy Reid narrative, and I liked all the things you were saying about what we used to think about Andy Reid, which is like, he can't win the big game and he has to win this one. I actually think both of those quotes that you just said, Peter, could apply to Kyle Shanahan as well because I think he's teetering on he can't win the big game and he has to win this this one or he joins a very unfortunate club of head coaches who have coached in two Super Bowls in a five-year span and lost both it's not a name you it's not a list you want to be on Bud Grant did it Dan Reeves did it and Marv Levy did it with the Buffalo Bills it's not what you want to do with this same team and I know there's not a lot of overlap players I think it's nine I believe from the 49ers Super Bowl lost the Chiefs five years ago and this one but I I take the same Andy Reid on the precipice on on the doorstep of history application to Kyle Shanahan but the bad kind of history because people always put Kyle Shanahan in this Sean McVay young electric fun coaches that have changed the game but if you can't get to this stage and put the nail in the coffin and win this game, then you start opening up a conversation about yourself as a head coach that I don't think Kyle Shanahan should want or deserves, frankly. Yeah, Super Bowl rematches with the same coaches, the winning coach undefeated in that second. Mm. Oh, my goodness. When you said, when you were bringing up, like, we'll get into a conversation of Andy Reid, the greatest coach of all time, like, I almost, like, wince. Like, that, mm. that's going to be a thing. Like, that's that's going to be a, a big debate, and there's going to be a lot of pushback. Three Super Bowl appearances, a Super Bowl appearance with the Eagles, of course, as we know, and all the regular season wins. He's, I think, just a few behind Belichick after yeah. we spent all season talking about Belichick mm-hmm. chasing that record. Belichick's taking the year off. We could rattle off 13 regular season Does, the number, does the number mean you're like the greatest coach ever? Because the anti is going to be he lost never could get it done with Philly. And yeah. Mahomes comes in and it's like it's a Mahomes product. And I love Andy. But sounds like, like a great debate. It like yeah, but can't, debate. don't people say that about Belichick and what he did with Brady? Yeah, and I've he said lost it many Brady times. And, right, exactly. 